When it comes to road haulage, of course, most of the hard work is done by large Class 8 heavy hauling trucks. So far, those are normally powered by diesel, but we've seen in the last couple of years some alternatives come into the spotlight. We've seen Tesla unveil the Tesla Semi, a Class 8 full electric truck, which is already being trialed in parts of the US to help Tesla ship various components and vehicles around the country. We've then seen the hydrogen fuel cell trucks being developed by Toyota. They are prototypes. They're being used at the port of Los Angeles to help do drayage duties. But I'm here in Scottsdale, Arizona, where Nikola Motor is unveiling two of its trucks, which are going to be available as both hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric vehicles. In addition to these two trucks, the Nikola 2 and the Nikola Tray, we've also seen two other vehicles get revealed. There's the NZT or NZT behind me, which is an all electric off-road adventure vehicle. It's designed to compete against the very best from Polaris and all of those other companies that make off-road capable vehicles, whether they be used for adventure sports or whether they be used for hunting. It's fully electric, very powerful, and I'm going to have a ride in one a little later on. We've also seen the Reckless unveiled. That is a military spec vehicle that is going to hopefully be sold to the world's military. It's an attempt to try and lower the carbon footprint of militaries around the world. It can also be driven completely remotely by an operator away from the vehicle, and it also has capabilities to operate with an autonomous drone. I'm not really focused on the military vehicles, but we're going to focus on the other three and show you some of the things we've learned thus far. So let's start with the Nikola 2, Nikola's North American version of its Class 8 truck. Before we get too much into the working prototype behind me, I should note that the other truck unveiled at Nikola World, the Nikola Tray, is also here, but sadly not in drivable form. We are told, however, that the Nikola Tray, which is designed for a European market, shares the same drivetrain and configuration as the Nikola 2. It just looks slightly different and is built for slightly different uses, like traveling through narrow city streets. This vehicle will be offered with a hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain option as well as a battery electric drivetrain option. We've been told that the motors, the controllers, everything except the fuel source are identical between both the hydrogen fuel cell and the battery electric version. So let's deal with some specs from the drivetrain itself. First up, each axle is capable of producing 1,000 kilowatts of power and 2,000 pound-feet of torque. Nicola says that most people will opt for just a single powered axle, but if you want two axles to be powered, it can make that happen. There will, however, be some additional weight in association with all of that, which will in turn decrease your overall efficiency. The hydrogen fuel cell version of this vehicle can store a total of three megawatt hours of hydrogen fuel on board and the battery electric versions will be able to store anywhere between 500 kilowatt hours through to 750 kilowatt hours through to one megawatt hours of power, depending on which configuration you choose. With the drivetrain taken care of, let's talk about the interior of this vehicle. Nikola has changed the design of the truck primarily because there's no internal combustion engine or traditional gearbox underneath the cab to worry about. This has meant that Nikola has been able to move the driver's seat forward by approximately four feet, at least four feet further forward than it would be in an internal combustion engine diesel big rig. The doors are moved further back as well, meaning that the driver enters into almost a cockpit-like layout from the rear of the vehicle. The interior of the truck is fully digitized. There's about a 14-inch touchscreen display in front of the driver, as well as a 21-inch display acting as the infotainment system. What's particularly interesting about this, however, is that unlike your usual infotainment system, which is built using automotive-grade components, Nikola has opted to use HTML5 
the same programming language that pretty much the entire internet is based on today to use as a base for its infotainment system. This, says Nicola, means that its trucks have a far more secure operating system and system interaction with the driver than your standard infotainment system. While we're on the subject of HTML5 and security, all of the Nikola trucks can receive over-the-air updates, which means, of course, they are kept up to date when it comes to security. The driver's key is, as you might expect, completely digital. There's no physical key. And as Nicola said, that's really advantageous for large fleet operators because they can give drivers access via their smartphones to whichever vehicle they happen to be driving in a single day. There's no worry about having to trade keys or track keys. The driver just keeps their cell phone on them and the app does the rest. As the driver approaches the truck, automated steps come down from the side of the vehicle. Again, these steps reduce aerodynamic drag compared to a conventional diesel-powered truck, but it also means that as the driver gets closer to the vehicle, the air conditioning automatically turns on and the systems are ready to go when the driver sits behind the wheel. There's plenty of space in the back of the Nikola 2 as well, and there's also a little party feature that this truck has up its sleeve, that is very similar to one we've seen in Tesla electric cars, namely dog mode. Nicola says that many truckers like to take their dogs with them on long distance trips. And so all of its trucks have a dog mode. It enables the trucker to keep their pets inside the vehicle while the air conditioning runs. There's a display that's showing that the vehicle is on and air conditioning is running in case anyone gets nervous and the driver is alerted via the truck's smartphone app if there are any problems. Some of the savings that this truck has in efficiency come from its design. Nicola says it's far more efficient than any conventional diesel truck in terms of aerodynamic drag. And you'll also note that there are rear view cameras in place of rear view mirrors. That's because in the cab there are rear view displays that give unprecedented clarity to the truckers whatever the weather. It also reduces drag from outside, which further improves efficiency. You might think a truck this advanced would have self-driving features built in as standard. However, Nicola says it's not going to be developing autonomous vehicle capabilities for its trucks. Instead, it's ensuring all of its trucks come as standard from the factory with level four and level five compatible hardware fitted as standard. It then says it will be up to other third parties to develop autonomous drive capabilities. This might seem a little counterintuitive. After all, this is an advanced truck and we're told that the future of trucking is not only zero emission, but fully autonomous. But if you think about it, the Nikola 2, the Nikola Tray, both in the hydrogen and battery electric variants, are aimed primarily at large fleet operators, not individual owner operators. And when you're talking to a large fleet who's going to spend a large amount of money on a new fuel source, you have to convince them that that fuel source is both safe and convenient and affordable. They may be convinced, but the truckers themselves, the ones who do the driving, also have to be convinced. They don't want to be told, here's a new type of truck that we're going to ask you to drive. And oh, by the way, it's also going to be autonomous. Collect your pink slip on the way out. So it makes absolute sense to have this vehicle and focus on the fuel source and the emissions first before thinking about any kind of automation. It's not only easier to get past the trucking unions, but it also saves a little bit of money on the R&D cost side. Now we can't talk about a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle without asking where the hydrogen that's going to be used as fuel is coming from. Nikola has already thought of that problem and it intends to build a network of hydrogen refueling stations across the US, North America and eventually the entire world. These refueling stations will be capable of processing up to eight tons of hydrogen fuel a day, delivering eight tons of hydrogen fuel, which we're told is enough for 150 Nikola 2 trucks, refilling them from empty or 200 hydrogen fuel cell cars.
Importantly, Nikola says it will be generating the hydrogen it needs for all of these vehicles on site using renewable energy and an alkali electrolysis process of water. At the moment, it's talking about generating 30 to 40 percent of its electricity needed on site and buying in the rest. But ultimately, it wants to produce 100 percent of all of the electricity needed. It's going to be a lot on site or adjacent to the fueling stations in order to ensure the process is completely zero emission. I'll admit I don't know a huge amount about the electrolysis process nor do I know all that much about how much energy is needed. I do know however that it's a lot. It is a lot less efficient than producing electricity and storing it in battery packs. But, says Nicola, the reason why it's offering both hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric vehicles comes down to operational capabilities. With a hydrogen fuel cell truck, there's a lot less weight required to transport the energy around. Nicola says that if it was to build a three megawatt hour electric truck, it would add an additional 30,000 pounds to the vehicle's overall weight, which of course would reduce the amount of payload it could carry or tow. With the hydrogen fuel cell variant, it can not only carry more than it would if it was a diesel vehicle, but it's also lighter as well, which adds to the overall efficiency. But finally, there's the refueling question. Nicola says that the hydrogen fuel cell trucks it's building will be refillable in about 20 minutes. And while Tesla has its mega chargers on the way, Nicola's answer is pretty simple. It feels that battery electric and hydrogen electric vehicles can operate side by side. And it's one of the reasons why it's planning on building and selling both hydrogen and battery electric versions. You may think that Nikola is a brand new company that hasn't existed very long, but it has been around a fair while. And let me tell you as well, the company CEO is a fan of electric vehicles. He himself owns a Tesla and says he loves what Tesla has done. He also notes that he couldn't have done any better than what Tesla's doing, especially since Tesla is a publicly traded company. He also dropped a hint that suggested that Nikola is not going that way. No, it's hard being in the spotlight. Nikola is going a different route. And with plenty of companies already signed up for its trucks, including Anheuser-Busch, it's going to be an interesting company to follow. So one of the vehicles unveiled at Nikola World was the Nikola NZT. It's Nikola's answer to an off-road electric fun vehicle. It's going to be perfect for off-roading if you like hunting or you're looking for another, you know, way of getting around. And this, it's completely brilliant. It's got plenty of torque. It's got quad motor all wheel drive and it's super, super fun and super, super fast. And one of the fun things about this is it's completely silent other than the wind, of course. It's got plenty of torque. The seats are super comfortable. And yes, I'm filming this in a bit of a hurry because we only have one minute to go around the track. But I gotta say, this is a fun ride. I think this is going to be Nikola's special sauce. It's going to help Nikola raise the money it needs to build all of those trucks. Totally fantastic. So that's it from Nikola World. The only question remaining is when is this truck going to be on the road? This is a fully functioning working prototype. There's one out in the demo field a bit further over that we're not going to get to see in action, unfortunately, because we have to head back to Portland. But we should see these on the road in 2022. And the Nicola tray, which is mechanically identical underneath, just has a different cab on top for European markets, will enter into production in 2023. I'm assuming that we won't be seeing the Nicola 2 in New Zealand. We're more likely to get the Nicola tray, which is the smaller European variant of what appears to be a very capable truck. Yes, it's not electric, but if Nikola does manage to come good on its promise of making renewably generated hydrogen on site from solar panels, well, it's all about killing the diesel engine. And I think we can agree that's a very good thing indeed. I'll be back soon with more content, but until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite, and see you next time.